Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Denise Ejo, the CEO of Comod Cancer Foundation. I would like to welcome you to our Comod Cancer Foundation page. Our goal is to create an awareness of the challenges, support and guidance experienced in managing cancer care for sufferers, family, carers and friends. To engage with us, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click our notification bell. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm going to start. Um, Larry, how are you? I haven't said hello to you. It is called the administration before a Zoom meeting. That's okay. <laughs> how are you? I'm fine, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Gosh, you look very good and nice. Ha, ha, ha. See me. <laughs> hey. My survivors on the line, they're looking tush, tush, tush. <laughs> eh? We've got to do this thing. Got oh, yeah. We've got to enjoy this, haven't we? How are you feeling today? <laughs> uh, good. Okay. Thinking good. That, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, I'm starting in one minute. One minute. One minute. Uh, what's the time now? I was talking, I'm sorry to start. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Denise Ejo, the CEO of Comod Cancer Foundation. I'd like to welcome you all to this very interesting discussion from survivors' perspectives. Um, I'm actually hoping that today we'll be able to get some knowledge of how to either support ourselves, relatives and friends who are going on this cancer journey. I have today in the house Larry Lassisi, and I'm expecting one more person who is a survivor of breast cancer. Um, my story is slightly different, uh, but apparently according to the rules of cancer, I am what you call a cancer survivor. So today I want to welcome firstly Lanre um, into the house. 
Larry, please say something quickly and introduce yourself. Um, my name is Larry Lassisi, as, as um, Denise has said, and um, I'm a survivor. I'm surviving. I will keep surviving. Uh, a mother of three grown up daughters, ages 30, no, 29, 26, and um, 21. And um, what else? Um, a cancer survivor. Cancer survivor. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be talking predominantly about cancer um, from the perspective of someone who has been through it, who is going through it. So let's let me first ask you, I, I could have tried to do a poll today, but I'm not very good at this thing. I wish I was. I would have asked everybody if you knew, if you were a survivor, you are going through it, or you know someone going through it. But I haven't mastered this thing, so maybe next time I'll try it, but next I will. If you are a survivor, you will benefit. If you are in, on the journey, you will benefit. If you are trying to get, if you are caring for a relative, you will enjoy this session. So firstly, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Denise Ejo, the CEO of Como Cancer Foundation, as I said. Um, I am what you call, I live with cancer. So I'm going to throw something first at you so that maybe we'll start to understand why this is very important to me. I had chemo two days ago. And I'm sure you are looking and wondering, gosh, she looks very good. Really? Really? It's called polishing. <laughs> I'm having a good laugh. I have to have a good laugh. You have to learn to have a good laugh. You have to learn to have a wicked sense of humor to be able to go down this journey. You have to learn to understand your journey and how this affects you. So today I'm going to be talking from, I'm going to show you my journey because I still live, I still take chemo five years on and I'm still here. And I'm sure if I walked on the streets past many of you, um, you would most probably ask yourself, you, you, won't, you won't think I'm going through cancer at all. So from my own, from my own perspective, I'm actually saying to myself, okay, let me, let's talk about this thing. Let's talk about it from from the perspective of a survivor. So first I'm going to ask Larry, who has had it? She has gone through the treatment and um, um, she still, she has to go through her checks. Yeah. So Larry, you're going to be the first and I'm going to meet myself and I'm going to give you the floor for a few minutes. Right, okay. Thank you very much. Um, where do I want to start? Um, basically uh, five years ago, I I think age 50, went for my mammogram and I was told, long story short, I was told about me having stage three breast cancer. But I didn't really take, you know, it didn't really register. And then I had to go through chemo, I had to go through the um, radiotherapy. And I've developed other things in between fibromyalgia, angina, think about it. But during this um, stage, I'm just going to talk about the support that I got, um, support during cancer. So my support network was really my church, my friends and family. And it was, especially my daughter, my daughter was 16 then, She's 21 now, but she's 16 then and um, 16, 17. Yes, yeah, 16, 17. And um, we just moved home because basically we lost where we were living. It was repossessed and we just moved home and then we got the diagnosis for cancer. So she became my carer basically. And you can imagine she had to be my support network. The church was my support network. And then I've got families and friends. And when I say support network, they called me regularly. They were checking on me regularly. They phoned me. The phone calls you get, you don't realize how much it actually helps. For me, it helped me to keep sane. At a point in time, my hair was, I didn't have hair on my head at all. I was completely bald. Um, I had bed drills that was attached to my bed. So I've got bed guard, I still use it now. I've got toilet guards. 
Um, I've got the bathroom guard, so I get helped into the bathroom and back because I had a pick line in my arm. So, which means, I mean, some people will go, what is pick line? Basically, it's, um, I think doctor will explain more. It's a line they put through your arm and it goes straight into your heart and then hopefully nothing happens to you. But you, I had to live with that for a year. So it's taking your bad eating. So they come and change it for me. Every week they change it, they top it, they do whatever they need to do to get me going. But in, term, in terms of my support network, to keep my brain and to keep my mindset sane, I focused on God, that's me. It carried me through. But my people, I had friends that dropped food for me, they were cooking for my daughter. I had friends from Australia, everywhere around the world, they phoned to check on me and that really kept me sane. And even now, it's still necessary. People think you finished your chemo, you finished your radio, and you're okay. Actually, the journey just started. For me, it had actually just started now. I didn't know I could get access to funds, even though they gave you the form, but my brain was not working then. And somehow my cousin introduced me to Dr. Dennis and she helped me in some area, in that area where I could put the form together. So it's never too late to ask for support because I didn't know I could get support in that area in terms of the governmental support is what I'm saying because we are in this country. But in terms of family support, please don't hide it from them because I was going to do that. I was actually going to not tell any of my daughters, tell any of my you know, family. I didn't tell my mom, definitely didn't tell my mom. But I told my brother, I told my sisters. But I realized that if I'd kept it to myself, then probably I would not be looking like this or I won't be here today because it can get on your brain. It can make you depressed. It can't make you, you know, really question your existence. But thank God, I had God, I had that faith. I stood on the word, like I said, I'm a woman of faith. So I stood on the word that the Lord is my shepherd that helped me, but I went for my treatment. I followed what I was told to do. So yes, you're looking at my skin, but it got darker, my teeth got black. <laughs> so I had the dentist, I had a dentist that helped me there. So yes, my teeth is, get, is better now, but it was quite brown. My nails, this is all camouflage, my nails were <laughs> something something gave but this year was 58 55 years on earth and I said I'm treating myself so I went to do this and then put a bit of color in my hair <laughs> this color is just black but hey it's fine it makes me feel good so this is my treat for this year but every year I would I want to thank God for every day that I'm alive and I've got some people on this call that um, they met me half of my, well, true, they just met me recently, but they've seen days where I'm really weak, tired. So the bones are still hurting. But that support network in terms of people just checking in on you, it's very important. But if you don't speak out, how do they want to check on you? But don't let the things, the things that we need to avoid is what's the matter with you now? Why, what's the problem? That's not helpful for somebody that is going through this journey. It can make them feel, well, do you think I'm putting it on? Because there are days I am really tired and my bones really hurt. It's still happening now. And I finished the treatment since when? So but I'm still here. Um, what else can I talk about? Yeah, I struggle to, um, take my bath myself so i had people that are coming to help me take my bath i struggled to put clothes put my clothes on they helped me put my clothes on even to just having food to eat was quite mundane for me 
uh, I felt I started having Ogi, which I don't normally have. So in terms of support network, that's my support network. That was what I was doing. So that's just what I wanted to talk about today, my support network. Thank you, Lanre. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to go back to Lanre at some point so that people can ask questions. So if you have questions you want to ask, please type it in the box. We will answer it. Now I'm going to come to this from a very different perspective. And the reason I'm coming in from that perspective today, I'm going to be sharing my innermost pain. Um, so there are going to be graphics. It's a PowerPoint. There are graphics. I'm going to show you the journey because this is called myths and misconceptions. And I'm going to show you. So I started off with Larry because, you know, we have to start off this thing very gently or else <laughs> some people will just <laughs> be freaking out. But I'm, 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 I think we have to say it as it is. And I'm going to be saying it to you today as it is. So I'm going to put up my a slide. So let me... Let me find out how I'm supposed to do this now, because like I say, me and technology, we know how to embarrass ourselves very well, but we will get there. So it's called screen share, right? That's it. And I'm going to try as much as possible to talk you through this. Please, behind this presentation, just remember how I look today, please. Just, just remember, and some of it are graphics. Um, and I'm sharing it, and I, I know that I'm sharing it, <laughs> but I hope that it will be of a tool to help others that are going through cancer or whatever you're expecting. Just, just know that it, it isn't that bad, okay? So after I told this, my treatments and, my, and the diagnosis. So let me show you the diagnosis, and I'm going to start. You see this thing, it seems as if it's when somebody's 50 that it starts, but uh <laughs> that is not supposed to be so where is my show my slide show now you see technology now i can't find my thing my screens uh show slide show that's it start from the beginning and here we go so let's go Uh, move now. What's wrong with you? Mm. You see? Okay. So this was my 50th birthday five years ago. And I'll be 55 this year. I'm not yet 55. And my 50th birthday, the first thing I woke up to was I could not see. That is, I woke up and I could not see. So I'm going to tell you how I got to where I got to. So my fears of cancer, the realities and my uncertainties had come to bear. And my biggest question for the first time in my life was, will I see again? Because a major side effect of my diagnosis, I had to have brain surgery. And brain surgery means I could not see. And I, I was at risk of either being blind, um, losing my um, hearing, losing my senses, losing. Brain surgery is one of the int most interesting surgeries you ever have. If you feel those surgery forms, it tells you things like, um, um, how does it go? It says, you sign off these forms. And basically, I, when, I was, when the woman was reading it to me, I said, just write there that you, you can die and then tell me to sign it because everything else you're saying, I don't understand it, there's no need. I was diagnosed five years ago with breast cancer metastasizing in the brain, which means in simple English, I'm supposed to have breast cancer and the tumors I have are in my brain. Um, I was, I had a headache. So let me go from there. I had a headache, ordinary headache. So I'm going to first say to people on this platform, if you have any persistent illness, any persistent illness that is common, you know, uh, stomach ache, diarrhea, constipation, that is cons persistent, please, please, please 
don't 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 just sit down and say I'm taking the uh, diarrhea medicine. I take there might be something wrong. It's one thing I quickly learned from this cancer journey, which I may not have known prior to this. And I found myself running helter skelter, being told that I was diagnosed with cancer, and I was told that it was. A metastasis. Now, please, for I'm not a, I'm not a medical person, so some terms or words I have had to change them to the way I can explain them in the way I understand it, because medical terms are very, very tongue twisting for me. It's a metastasis, meaning that it had moved for other parts of my body, which automatically means, and in, in cancer people's terms, that you have stage four cancer which to the layman of all of us sitting here today means that you have uh, um, cancer, you are going to die. Yeah. That's it. Now I'm trying to say it simply. But today I'm actually saying to you, is that really what he's saying? Sometimes you've got to realize you have the ability, you must fight. I can't fight for you. You must fight your journey to survive this, to at least have some quality of life, to at least have a, yourself finding out who you are and where you're going. First things that crossed my mind was, I was 50 and I had a child in just two year eight. What, what, what's going to happen to her? Where are we supposed to start? What am I supposed to do? I'm just trying to show you how, so when I'm asking the big questions here, my fears, my reality, and my uncertainties all came together on the day I turned 50, because I had, on the day of my daughter's 12th birthday, I had my first brain surgery, which was for approximately four hours. And that was in September, 2016. I'm still here. So nobody should, nobody should be looking for me somewhere else. I'm here. <laughs> so this is my first experience. Can you see my head? If you can't see, please close your eyes. Oh. These are the scars from the brain. So who you see now, this is the journey. Some people, they say, want to cut hand, you'll be crying. Cry for what? Please, you can't cry. They've, you've got a, something wrong with the, and they're going to take one kidney or one. I don't care what they're saying, take it. Just ask, what are my chances? Mm -hmm. Ask the questions, well, how does this affect me? Ask the questions, what am I going to do next? Turn to your own God and speak to him and ask him, so what am I supposed to do with this? Please, you cannot sit down and be crying. This is not a crying game. Mm -hmm. And cancer is going to affect one in two people as of 2021. So if it's one in two, are you going to be the one in two that are going to die? Are you going to be the one in two that are going to say, look, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight to the last bus stop. Because as you see me, I'm fighting. At least uh, I'm even celebrating today. My people, I'm trying to talk. And I know that to some people, it may seem um, it's going to be hard. This is the photograph of me when I've come out of one of them. But I made it a point. I told them, I said, take these photographs. Because if I'm telling somebody I've ever been, you're seeing me now, you will not relate this person to this person. I'm sure of that. If you see me on the street, you will not say this is the person that went through this. This is my reality. And after this, I had done through a second one, which was eight hours. And I can never forget that day. I, I was going to have that surgery on in the afternoon, and I... I spoke to my youngest daughter. She was in the boarding house in Nigeria. And I said to her, she said, mommy, when is your surgery? Da, 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 da. I said, I'm fine, I'm fine. When it's, when it's fixed, I'll tell you when it's fixed. I'll tell you when I'm going to do it. Um, because I, I, like um, Larry says, you cannot be hiding this thing. There are people that like to hide. And then when, when, when you find that you can't move forward again, your children are lost because they didn't even know. And, and it, they may have benefited more from walking the walk with you because at least they would have spent the time with you. Yeah. And she talked to me, we talked, and I said, all right, then I'll call you tomorrow. When I went into the surgery, it was about two o'clock. I came out about 8.39. 
I didn't even realize that my dad, who's about 85, had been called, at 80, had been called by my older brother to tell him, are you sleeping? You better wake up. Dennis has been in that surgery since, <laughs> since, since two o'clock. She hasn't come out. So you better wake up from the sleeping. <laughs> Don't sleep again. Everybody was like, why am I there for that long? The reason I'd been there for that long is that the location of the tumor at the time was in a place where any mistake, I think it could have affected my eye totally, right? Because you can see, I can see again. So I had gone back to being able to see again. I'm not going to be showing you all my gory pictures, but I'm going to be showing you some, some who I am. So I like this picture because I call this the changing look of Dr. D. And I'm going to tell you who is who, where is where. So this was this one in the blue at the red. Can you see my head? Very, very big. <laughs> this is for anybody who's going through cancer <laughs> or chemo. I'm giving you advice. Something is going to swell up. Yeah. Don't bother some part of your body is going to swell up because one of the drugs that they give, uh, I don't know, Larry, do you remember the name? There's a drug they give and that drug causes you to, steroids, it's the steroids. Steroids. Sorry. It's the steroids. It causes you to swell up. See my head. This has taken four years, five years to come back to almost, or it's almost there, it's almost there. It's not yet the original status, five years. This second picture um, was when I was on a second set of chemo because after my brain surgery, the first one, the, what do you call it? The, um, another tumor started to grow. Mm -hmm. So that you understand again, I have had nine tumors removed physically from my brain. I have had three, I think there's one now I'm waiting for the result for. Uh, I'm believing God that that one will, will have cleared, but it seems to be brain tumors that keep re recurring. But believing God, we have to know how we're going to walk it. Amen. So, see my big head? But still, it doesn't, it doesn't stop anything. We have to move on. I'm going to not lie to you. Um, I'm still in active treatment as of today, which means I had chemo on two days ago, on Thursday. Mm. I've been told that I will be on some form of chemo stroke immunotherapies for the rest of my life. Nobody has promised me life and nobody can promise any one of us life. Yes. Only God. However, we too must try and follow instruction. Mm. And when we talk about people that believe God, oh yes, if you want to pray, let us pray. We will know how we pray together. Those that are very close to me know that. Mm. But it doesn't mean God has his own plan. So please understand our days are numbered. It doesn't matter what religion you are. God's time is going to be his time and there's nothing you can do about that, okay? So where are we now? I'm going to the next slide, let me see. This was another set of the surgery. So that first set I showed you was the one where they cut those scars, you know, those scars you saw. This is another one. This was the most painful experience I have ever had in my entire life. And if somebody had told me this was my bargain, I may not have agreed with them. Okay? And the reason I'm saying that now is because I went through Sorry, something has gone on here and I can't see my screen. I went through, so you see my face, I'm sure my face tells you exactly how I was feeling that day. On this first one, they removed three tumors using what they call a gamma knife. Gamma knife surgery means that they put this thing, you see this metal thing, is 
is gladiator's hat. Mm. They drill it into your head. Drill. Mm. First, I thought I had cried for the first part, for the process, and then they will numb the whole place. But when I it was time to remove it, because I had to sit on a, you know, a scanning machine, uh, what do you call it? Uh, CT scan, that machine, the one that you line. Anyway, everybody would have gone through one in your lifetime. Um, when you go through it, I had to lie on that thing for three and a half hours. Mm. And you must not move. Mm. Cry, I cried. But the worst part was when I came out and they wanted to remove it. My younger brother was there that day and he, he just saw me crying and was like, Dennis, is it that bad? Please. I couldn't believe that I was the one. And as I'm talking to you, please let me tell you, it brings a lot of emotions back. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality was I had four screws in my head to remove three tumors in my brain. So I'm asking anybody going through treatment, please, it doesn't matter. Try. Please, I'm begging you, try. Enter it. Enter the treatment with your head and believe God. Last, last. It, it, the impact is, is better than for you to sleep there and say, I'm praying, I'm doing this. Pray, please. I am also going to tell you, pray. But it was hard. This is the first one. A year later, they're coming back to tell me four have grown again. And they are doing this thing. Can you imagine how I felt? Are you seeing how I felt? I just was tired. Tired. Four brain tumors a year later. Oh, what else have I got? God, I don't have anybody else. Because it's not so much that I was going to die. I wasn't even asleep. So that you understand. I was awake while they were doing all this thing. Mm. In pain, I was awake. This one was slightly longer because there were four, so they had to do the, the beams from four different ones. You will say that, oh, okay, everything is fine. No. A year later, another set had grown again. Another one had grown. That's what resulted in the second cutting of the group. That was seven and a half hours, eight hours. Mm. I am sharing this and I'm sharing it from my heart because this story is not for me alone. This, anybody on this platform that is going through ca cancer today experiences what I'm talking about here. As you're looking at me, I'm sure you'll be asking, what was she thinking about? What was I thinking about? On this particular day, I'd got what they call them. I had, uh, I had gone into neutropenia, you know, what do you call it? Um, I don't know how you call it, where your bloods and all that were no longer, where, where your cells were very low. This is my reality till today. Please understand, this is my reality till today. Because when I get sick, I don't have immune system to always fight. So I don't hang around people if you have a cold, if you have a cough, if you have things going on around you. Right? I don't. Because I don't have that. In this same time, the other one was the sun. Um, not sun, hay fever. Uh, allergy. My eyes. Even today when I woke up, my eyes. And then I have to start putting drops. My dry eyes, these eyes. It becomes your reality. Does that mean you're going to give up? No. Does that mean that God is sleeping and he doesn't love you? No. Does that mean that he's not going to help you? No. Does that mean that the doctors don't know what they're saying? No. It means seek help. Please, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart because I know this pain. And I'm telling you today, this conversation I'm having is from emotion. It's not, it's not I'm not preaching to anybody. I'm trying to explain to you that if you know family, help them. Mm. Walk with them, hold their hand, no matter what. And please don't patronize a cancer patient because unless you are sitting in my chair, you do not know what is paining me. And you can't help me. You can't. 
you can't help a bank as a person. They have to face it themselves. You can only be there, hold them, encourage them, be strong for them, tell them how you, anything. As I have seen me, I had chemo two days ago. I haven't eaten. I can't eat. The fear of eating nice if I'm going to throw up. Yeah. Immediately I start to throw up, it means I'm going to hospital. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to now have to systematically, thank God, my, my daughter's around, my children around me. I go and beg them now and they will start working out what, okay, let's see what mom is not going to smell. But that's where we are. It's my reality. And am I going to sit down and say to you, oh, uh, well, because uh, I want to cry. No, I don't want to cry. Oh, I'm going to give up that lie. I'm not giving up nothing. I'm telling you now, if you are going there, and a lot of people that have been on this platform that know me before, they will tell you, they've been through it. That's the only way we survive this. That is the only way we survive this. This is my last one. Now. This is the bed. Waiting to be told there was barely any blood there. I don't know whether a white red, red blood cell, white blood cell. I don't know which one. It was finished. <laughs> I, in fact, I was I cried because it was a, a, an African nurse that was looking after me, and they told her I was need to panic. And then she went and put all these gloves and was standing and hiding. And I had to call her. I said, "Did I tell you that I, I am carrying a disease that kills somebody? What's wrong with you?" Don't, don't treat me like that. If that's the way you get out of here. Yeah. Because I was so pained that in my own pain, you couldn't even have compassion. Yeah. I was told nobody could come near me. All of a sudden, everybody had to wear a mask if you wanted to see me. Why? Because, and I had to tell the woman, I understand you are the one carrying the disease, not me. If you carry any disease and walk near me, I'm going, I'm going to die of it. Like I said to you today, when you go through this, you have to know yourself. When you are down and out, after today, there is no going out for me for seven days. Because if I step out of my house, I am prone to getting infected. And if I get infected, I'm going to get sick. And if I get sick, I'm going to end up in hospital. And if I end up in hospital, then I'm having a new fight again. Is it worth it just because I want to go out? No, it's not. So those of you with cancer, or fighting cancer, or battling cancer, please, no when to stop. Please, I'm begging you. This is um, this is me. If you're going through it, you just have to search for the strength to fight. I live like this. I will by tomorrow now my I will start running temperature, I will start crying, I will start doing my bones hurt you know, almost all the time and um, Larry has already said it, said it. You see, it's not your leg that is swollen, it's your hands that is swollen, it's not your hands that is swollen, you got permanent headache, you know, it's your normal, please, it becomes that person's normal, so if you are caring for that person, or you are living with it, find ways to make things good for you, I learned one of the things that was very interesting in this journey, I learned to use natural food to solve my problem. You know, these drugs cause your stomach to be full. I've learned to eat raw okra. It will help my, 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 what's it called? The linings of my stomach. It's fine for me. I've learned it. I can drink kale. You know, like saying, uh, uh, okay, what do you call it? Uh, uh, vegetables, F4, vegetables, ugu. We're drinking the water. You know why? Because it's the thing that's going to give your blood cell. It's going to give you the blood that's going to help you to repair the ones that have chemo has messed up. So if you sit down there and like, cry, cry, it's not going to help you. Please, it's not going to help you. Stand up, try, wake up in the morning, help them, tell them to help you to get downstairs or upstairs or somebody. Sit down on the chair and, 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 and drink something, drink a lot of water and just be happy. Thank God for every single day. Thank God for every single minute. Thank God for those around you. Just thank God that you still are alive. And carry people along. Don't shut them out. Don't decide whether if they cannot deal with it, then they leave you. That's the truth. Anybody who cannot deal with it or work with you on this journey, let them go. Don't carry people's baggage. 
because cancer on its own is, is, is baggage. Because at the end of the day, when the thing gets too much, some people will walk and that's more painful because they think that it's about the money, it's about this. It's not always about that. Sometimes all I need is a friend to talk to. Sometimes all I need is somebody to say, can we pray together? Sometimes all I need is, can you follow me to the hospital today? Sometimes, please, can you help me make a pursuit? That's it. Because you can't carry the pain with me. You can't. You don't know how I feel. You don't know what's all about. And you will never know. And may God not let you know. Because it's not an easy journey. It's not for the faint-hearted, as we say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have to. I have to. I have to be realistic. So these are my next steps. I brought my, my story to you today because I'm saying it from the deepest part of my, my heart. And, and I need, in Nigeria especially, my home country, I need you to understand that you have to fight. You have to share with your friends. Let them know. I'm going to post this. Let them know that other people go through it. A lot of people are going through it. I get a lot of people, like Larry said, I, I've, I've, I've never even seen Larry in my life. Let me be honest, she will tell you, we've never met. But like she said, somebody asked me to talk, well, let me see how we can support, support, support each other. That's what it is. And when I see somebody that needs help, I will send them, Larry, can you support? I have somebody, the one of the speakers that is coming on shortly. She's, she's in Nigeria. I call her, please, can you support this person? It's not about money. This journey, a lot of people think it's money. It's not money. It is the person that will hug you when you're crying. It's the person that will be there with you when you're crying. That's what matters. So I want to thank you all, and I want to make you believe that together we can fight, together we will, we will, we will, we will, we will win. And I've got one more person who has a five, 10 minutes to talk. Five minutes to talk, and then you can ask questions. Ask questions. But I'm going to beg everybody to do the fight move on. When you ever meet a cancer person, don't ever come and tell us it is well. <laughs> don't come and tell us that everything is okay. It is not okay. It is not well. <laughs> don't patronize us. Don't talk down at us. Talk to us as people. Don't, so when you see us, don't come and start. <laughs> we don't want you to cry for us, please, because we're already crying on our own every day. I'm going to spend my night crying. I can tell you that in advance. Do you know how that feels? Mm. So I don't need you to help me to add to it because I know I'm going to cry this night and tomorrow. I know. And maybe Monday. So I don't need an outsider telling me how, how it is well. Don't tell me about that. Don't worry about it. I know. So please, if you are supporting anybody, just listen to them. Just hold them. Just let's let them tell you a story. If they want to gist about all the things they did in secondary school, just listen. That's it. Please, I am begging. I am begging all those who care for cancer patients around the world. Please, that's what we want. We want a friend. We want a companion. We don't want anybody patronizing us anymore because the truth is nobody can help us on this journey. I want to say a very, very big thank you to you all. I haven't finished. Oh, this is our, you can follow us on our Instagram page, our Facebook page. We have a website. And we have um, WhatsApp, so you, some of you would have put your messages from WhatsApp. Um, we don't normally put that. I don't know that, that that slide was done by one of my team. So fine, uh, that's our account number, but we don't tend to do that. I want to want. I want to bring on one more person, and then the floor will be open, and I will start taking questions. So, um. Anastasia, are you in the house? Please say yes. I am. You are. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Are you Angeli? <laughs> That's another breast cancer survivor. So you can see that we know they agree. Don't help us agree. We don't agree. So you two must not agree. <laughs> Anastasia, welcome into the house. Anastasia is also a breast cancer survivor and she will be talking to you from her perspective um she's going to talk for about five minutes then the floor is open i'm going to be checking messages now all right anastasia it's all yours to go okay 
Good afternoon, everybody. Good to have you here. I'm actually going for a function. That's why you see me all dressed up. Um, <clears throat> cancer uh, is the dreaded word, as I would say. Before I had it, you know, it, it, it's something nobody wants to talk about, nobody wants to hear. One of my support system, Ame Onguna, told me, Auntie, you demystified cancer for me. When I saw the lump on my breast in February last year, I was able to tell my second daughter because I felt my first daughter's um, uh, heart wasn't going to be you know, strong enough to hold the news. I was diagnosed in February last year, um, stage two triple negative breast cancer. And I told my friend, uh, my brother, Joseph, and my daughter, and you know, they were there for me. I had friends from my secondary school, my primary school. A lot of people believed I shouldn't treat it, you know, I shouldn't go medically. Some wanted me to go the native way. I have a friend, a Muslim, who told me how fast said I must not go for a surgery and all that. But then, you know, I had doctors talking to me, oncologists talking to me from America, from Nigeria. I, I, you know, when, when you're diagnosed first, it's like the world is coming to an end. It's like you're going to die. But then, if you have the right support system, my children were there for me. And I had good friends who were ready to walk the journey with me. And a particular one, Dr. Egosa in America, told the doctors here the treatment. I would say some of our doctors, not all, are so money conscious that you know, they, they just want to go in there without really you know, doing proper investigation. They, they, they are all just out there for the money they could get. The first surgeon I met was like, oh, we'll just take out the breast and then uh, 2.5 million. But my friend in America said, no, the kind of cancer you have, if they put a knife on you, it will spread. You have to do something called a neoadjuvant chemo. And I had four cycles of it. By the second cycle, my hair had all fallen off. I was bald. And my daughter said, mommy, I'll cut my hair. It's just hair. And she really cut her hair, you know. We we're both bald at that time. I had um, people that showed me love, calls, and people were there for me. We we'll walk in the mornings after my chemo. The first few days are terrible. I am down. I had chemo bonds. And, you know, nothing, no, no, nothing appeals to me. Someone was always coming in with a caterer to make what, you know, she felt I could take. And, you know, there are different meats to eat. In Nigeria, people will tell you, eat pepper. I started having sores all over my mouth because my immunity was low. But my friends over there would say, take ice cream. If you, if you know you feel like eating ice cream, take ice cream. A lot of people will tell you what they believe. People that haven't even walked the journey, that haven't been there. You know, they just assume and tell you what they think you should do. People told me don't eat rice, don't eat potato, don't eat this. But those are the things you need. You need to be healthy, to be able to fight your chemo. Because the chemo is not easy. The drugs are so concentrated that you have to be strong, you have to eat well to be able to stand it. My doctor told me some people, have, once they take the first shot, it goes to hit them in their brain and they pass out. You know, so you have to be strong. Those things they told me not to eat were the things I really needed to help me on the journey. And, you know, I'm standing here today after my mask touched on me, you won't know. That you know, if I dress up, you won't know, except maybe when you come into the house, if you are closed and you see that I am naked, yes, then you know. But it's not a death sentence, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I hold my head up and you know, I'm proud and I'm ready to walk the journey with anybody because people were there for me. It's not a journey you can walk alone, you need all the support system. Dr. Dennis, you know, I'm very proud of you. In her journey, she went back to read medicine mm -hmm. so she can help people, you know? So, and I have been learning a lot too. 
I have had cause to assist one or two people. You, you need all the funds. You need all the love. You need all this, everything. Cancer is not an easy thing. You have to go for your periodical tests, for your checkups. You know, sometimes, you know, I feel so tired. I don't want to do anything. This morning, I was telling my friend, she's all over me. She wants to give me this. She doesn't want me to carry my bag. I said, no, I can't do it. She said, no, Anne, you just, you know, just be there. Walk and follow me. I'll carry all the bags. I said, no, you know. So I, I, I think if you have love, you, the basic thing is love. If you have love, you'll be able to fight it. It's a, you, you have to fight. You have to fight it. Cancer is no big deal. And I pray every day that the cure for cancer will come in our lifetime. Polio was a disease that was killing people. Now, polio has almost, if not, been eradicated. And so I know we'll live to see that day where cancer will be eradicated. Don't pity us. We don't need your pity. Just walk the journey with us. And hopefully, there will be a cure to cancer. Thank you, Anastasia. Sorry, let me correct something. I don't have a, a medical degree. I have a PhD <laughs> in education. <laughs> and I'm graduating today. <laughs> Against all the odds. I'm going to say something here now before we, anybody ask question, you please put up your put up your hands if you ask a question now. You are nothing you want to do, whether you have cancer or not, do it. You want to go back to school? Do it. Oh, you want to sit down in your house and be and be typing and be and making clothes? Do it. Yes. Don't sit down and say because I have cancer. Mm. Follow your dream as if it yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. Follow sorry, your Dr. drive Dr. as if sorry, it wasn't Dr. there. Sorry, sorry, doctor. A quick one. Sorry, I forgot this. You know, a, a, a lot of people who want to sell these uh, uh, herbal drugs, they will tell you. If you take this drug, it will melt the lump and all that. They have killed a lot of people. I tell people, especially women, if you have fibroid, if you have, if you have a lump, go and see a doctor. Yes, I'm not saying you shouldn't pray. Prayers really helped me because prayers made the doctors here work with the doctors in America. But please seek medical care. That is the only way. Chemo is the only way. A lot of people told me not to do chemo. They said I should eat carrots. How many carrots will I eat? How many carrots? They said don't do chemo. Chemo, we, yes, I know chemo has its own side effects and all that, but please seek medical attention. That is the only way to go about it. Uh, Larry, you have something to say? Yeah, oh, wow. No, I'm just listening to uh, uh, Anne in, when they said she should eat carrot. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's, just, that's just serious. Anyway, I just meant to just add on to the bit that you're talking about your health. It's really, it does matter eating healthy, you know, just don't wait. You don't have to wait till they tell you cancer anyway or any disease. Just have a healthy lifestyle. I had to change everything about the way I eat, the way I, you know, everything. I cook everything. I had to change. My mindset was focused on I am going to get over this. I am going to survive this. But, I, but that is the answer, though. Yeah. Your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So I it have, wasn't to do with anything else. It's your yeah, mindset. My mindset. And it, it works both ways. So I wake up with, I am going to be okay. I wake up. So what your children or your support network, the face they see also helps with the way they support you. Yeah. Because I, they come in, even my head was patchy everywhere. But my daughter would go, hello, mommy. You know, it's, we, were making, we were making jokes with it. Mom, this is your hair. Do you want me to ask? Don't touch my hair, please, please, just leave me. But you know, it was, it's there. It's not going to go anywhere. Yes, I needed the support. I had people come in. They would sit with me every Saturday. She would just come in. That's our own. She would come in. They would take me to the hospital and back. 
Yes, I could not eat, I could not, like they're saying, the bones are still hurting. We still have things going on. But if we, we just want that support, and also please speak out, speak out. It's not, you are not, it's not to death. If I kept quiet, honestly, I probably would have been gone today mm -hmm. because I had other things that had happened before the diagnosis came in. So you exactly. can imagine depression, everything can set in. But I said to myself, no way, this is not going to take me. I'm going to see my grandchildren. I am going to walk the walk. I am going to be beautiful. I look at the mirror, I'm beautiful. My boldness is beautiful. I even started doing my, because I do makeup on here anyway. I make up, I glam myself up just to make me feel good. So yes, this is makeup this morning and the computer is doing a good job. So that's fine. I mean, enjoy. Yeah, I think it. all of us are doing that. We're making progress. We have, we have had to learn to do this. Some of us have never done makeup. <laughs> anyway, I think yes. just my <laughs> eyebrows, they are. Okay. Think about where oh, yeah, that one is. That is such your body. The whole thing will go like this. Nothing. Is there any way that those of us who who are friends to you, who are associates to you, can we have that kind of a group that people who have cancer can call upon, that these are the people that you know know about people who have cancer and can help? I, I put up my hand to say, I am willing to be a volunteer to actually work with people, to work with people in a group who can come up and be maybe cancer friends are like it's called dementia friends so i don't mind we can say cancer friends in different parts of the world mm -hmm. and we can share knowledge on how to help and relate with people who have cancer knowing that we have listened to what you have also shared here secondly i know that this one is medical a, a medical terrain and a very very a very it's not an easy plane to travel but i am a massage therapist and in my massage therapy, I've, I do sports massage. Sports massage is very related to the medical arm of massage. I did it in the UK, my certification. So um, I know how sensitive massage is on the body. If for any reason, I know that after surgery, after a while, you can do massage. If for any reason that can be of help, I would like to know what kind of help I can also give in that aspect of what I can do in this type of environment. Um, can you please reach out to us? Um, we've got, I put up a phone number somewhere um, um, on the slide out, so I'll put it back on. And then if you just slide and send us a text or something, we'll bring it up with you. We tend to have a lot of people that help, I, to be very clear. Anastasia mm -hmm. will tell you that is how I'm, I don't know Anastasia. So quite a lot of people here I don't really know who are cancer survivors, um, but this platform has brought us together. So anybody that is wanting to be part of us, we are very open to welcoming you. Send us a message um, on any of our uh, uh, platforms and we will get in touch with you to where we have people that need your help. So what we do, Anastasia will, or Larry will tell, there are other people that don't mind trying to look for them. Not everybody's on this one. But depending on what you want, we'll find who is near you that can help you. So that's the way it goes. So thank you very much for the offer. Please just send us a WhatsApp message and we will get in touch.
Thank you. Any other comment? Any other? Um, doctor, just to let the um, uh, the lady know as well, she was saying um, something about Komod. Um, it's a platform for cancer survivors. So we do have different, like I've got a platform where I do just cancer awareness on podcasts, but Komod is for, for cancer survivors. So if you are somebody, a cancer patient or you, you need support, just reach out. And then she will signpost you to who needs to support. Does that answer your question as well, Dr. Annie? Sister Annie? Yes, yes. Because you were asking if there were other platforms, you were saying something about cancer friends. I'm just saying we do have, you know, where we do have all these different platforms as well, where people come come to us if they need support or they can, you know, share their experience or whatever we can do to help each other. Hence the reason why I'm even here, do you, do you get? So that was one part of the question, Dr. Dennis didn't hear you. That's why I said I should say that. Is that okay? Yes, it is, thank you. Okay, any more questions? Any more comments? My internet, yes, Doctor Dennis. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Doctor Dennis. Yeah. Yes, yes. Where, where? Yeah, I, I forgot to mention this. You know, sometimes um, we, we, we don't need negative people around us. I don't know if it had been mentioned. Yes, you know, I joined in. Yeah, okay. Because th there was a particular friend of mine. Whenever she calls me, I always cry. And my daughter was like, "Mommy, stop receiving her calls. I will talk to her." You know, she was always telling me things that she made me see death. You know, I was telling at the any time she calls me, it was like that was the end of the world, you know, for me. And so we don't need people like that around us. We are human beings. Cancer is not a death sentence. That's what I would say. It's like malaria. Yes, yes, I would say that now, by the grace of God, you know. So you whatever you can do to encourage the person, please do. Please do. And if you know anybody who has anything, you know, in, in my journey, I have had cause to assist some people to go for mammogram and all that. We found that it was nothing. Some have died in the process of our treatment and, you know, but we can still survive it. 70% of us survive. Okay. Um, Sarah, you have something to say, so I will put can you unmute yourself and I will put your hands down. I'm about to end this now because it's one hour we've gone past. So Sarah, go on. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing your stories, um, beautiful sisters. Um, my question is a quick one to Dr. Um, Dennis. So you know you said something about you had um you had um constant head headaches, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, so um. Well, did, they, did you have any other uh, any other symptoms as well, or was it just the constant headaches? Just the constant headaches. Mm. And how long did it take you before you um, decided to maybe give your GP a call to notify your GP about okay, it? Okay, to be very honest with you, mm -hmm. I was in Nigeria. Right. The reason I got to realize was when they did all the tests mm -hmm. that had to do with blood pressure you know there's a there's a series of tests that they tend to follow bp um i'm not a doctor i'm a doctor of medical, all that. Mm -hmm. medical so mm -hmm. um um blood pressure there are some things they do that they do they do all these blood vital tests and all that vital signs vital signs all vital that signs, they, they your, said there was no blood count everything ah. what then happened was because by the time I even came into the UK, I said the the, the, the consultant at and he said there was not that they should give me painkiller to go home. I told mm -hmm. them I'm not going anywhere again. Mm -hmm. I am not going anywhere. And that was the best decision. And luckily, mm -hmm. the A&E doctor that saw me now said, this woman must know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Just do a CT scan. Right. And then when they did the CT scan, I didn't come from downstairs. I didn't come, I was upstairs. I didn't get down before they had called them 
to say, no, 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 there's, there's something mm. funny there. And then they called King's College. So that is oh. how, but the truth was, I was actually originally diagnosed in Nigeria. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you it was sharing. headache. It was headache, but it was a persistent headache. And it was very funny because it would be very bad. Then it would stop. I'll have a migraine mm-hmm. and it would stop. But then there was a point where, and the time I knew there was something wrong was when I now could not see. One of one side of my eyes does not see very well. I, I okay. could, I could it's, it's now it's now better i can see i can see this hand up to a point from the side yeah but i couldn't before wow, wow. so I, how, long, how long was that sorry sorry, sorry, sorry Auntie Larry. how long was that like the time frame between obviously when you got diagnosed in nigeria and when you came to the uk and then started they obviously yeah. spotted something 48 hours <laughs> really oh wow okay because I went straight, I went to my GP and I, I couldn't, I wasn't walking straight. They told me to stand on the straight line. I couldn't mm. do it. So as soon as I couldn't do it, they said, oh, wait, wait, there, there, there must be something wrong. Don't they didn't say, go through yeah. all the other tests. So they said, let me, that's not my problem. But I had, I already knew. The only mm. difference was yeah. I was told in Nigeria that it was something totally different. But mm. the warning they gave me was correct. So I'm not going to not rubbish that. anybody. The truth is that they told me I was very sick and I had cancer. Mm. Right. that was when i learned to understand that even if you if you have a tumor if you have cancer if you have one tumor mm-hmm. if you have a, a singular tumor in your brain mm-hmm. it can be cancer mm. cancer of the brain if you have mm. multiple tumors in your brain it's a metastasis see mm. me to have learned this thing. so i'm not a doctor yeah, you learn doctor over time as well circumstances <laughs> But I don't know circumstances. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, man. I, I just had to support that because with me, I was just fatigued, headache, constant headache, constant oh. tiredness. But I just put it down to I was just tired. I didn't yes. even know I had a lump. That's the point. Oh. And I was a grade three, triple negative, going grade four. So oh. I didn't even realize I had any tumor. I was oh. just t- always tired. All neg- the, ne- the headache was constant, hmm. always there. And like I said, if you recall when I started, I said it's, a, it's what is common illness that is actually the issue. Hmm. It's not something that you think came out of the blues. It's, just, it's something that you are used to. It's like having a headache all the time and just hmm. taking back. Now, to look at it very carefully, I've just told you in the chemo, in this cycle, I've actually done a PhD, just showing you that all I do is like to study, right? So mm-hmm. I work with children. I am a teacher, first and mm-hmm. foremost, before anything else. Mm-hmm. So to me, children give you headache, right? <laughs> so it didn't mean anything. True. I mean, True. if children <laughs> scream around me, I'm, I'll be very honest with you, no matter how much noise a child makes around me, I don't hear it. No. The only time I hear it is if you say something inappropriate or something I need to correct or something. But outside of that, children are allowed to shout and make noise because I'm a teacher. That is my job. They mm. must express themselves so I can correct them, not mm. an outsider correcting them wrongly. Mm. So you get what I'm saying? So looking at it yeah. from that perspective, my job was, was the reason I wouldn't have seen it. Mm. The day I went into a car in Palomo, I can never forget. And next day, I saw myself next to a car just about to damn it in. I was like, mm. I didn't see that car. Wow. And it was then I knew that, yes, alarm has healed. Something is oh. But I had been going to doctors and all the signs were nothing because I don't have high BP. I don't have a um, blood pressure. I don't have all those things. I been, mm. Even till today, I did my scans last week. You can't say kidney is functioning, it's not functioning. No, they are all functioning properly. But mm. the brain and the body are, are not, and me and God are all fighting together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i want to thank everyone for coming on board today i want to thank you all for being part of this dr nkiru i saw your message i have read it um i'm going to look for your contact from behind and come back to you um so let's have a chat please we do work with them the national cancer society in nigeria we're partners with them and i'm done dr What's his name has just left the forum and he did say he had to leave. Um, you got you, somebody, Alaba. Yeah, this? Alaba will talk, yeah. And then the uh, cancer advocacy in Nigeria, we partner with them. 
Um, we partner with quite a few people in Nigeria in helping us to promote what we're doing. And over the next six months, we still have targets we haven't met and we are driving it. But our fundamentals, I'm telling everybody now, our fundamental drive in cancer in Nigeria oh. is cancer awareness. awareness. We're not doing treatments. We're not getting into anything because we know that we'll get lost. But we want every state in Nigeria to at least have some signposting to yeah. any government center that does cancer treatment. That is our fundamental drive. And by the grace of God, we will achieve it. We don't care how, but we know that God will make a way because we're trying to work for the good of other people. And we know that we will reach out to people. In Nigeria, I'm very concerned that there is, unless you're in very specific states or you're in very specific, or where a cancer survivor is really trying to push it, there's really not enough being advertised on how to find help in Nigeria. But we will, we will all work together. We're all working together. There's a lot of discussions going on. There are lots of cancer foundations in Nigeria that are helping people and we are partnered with them. So if we have people that need help, we do reach out to them and we share it on our platform and we talk to them. Now I've got one more person that's going to talk and then I'm closing down for the afternoon. So very big thank you. Alaba, you have to unmute yourself, please. Hi, I just wanted to ask if you could post the numbers and the Komod Cancer account on the WhatsApp for, for Komod Cancer. So that is easier for us to pick from there. On the, where am I supposed to post it? On the channel. On the Komod Cancer WhatsApp. Where we got the link for the meeting today. Oh, okay. Oh, our, our okay, okay, I get what you meant. Uh, our, yeah. Yeah. So that it's easier for people to pick than going to look for it on the website. So the numbers and the account details. All right, let me just do something. Ah, see, we don't tend to normally send this like that, but hold on a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. I will ask, I will ask, Caleb, are you on? Caleb, can you send the account number to everybody that registered online to, um, on this platform today and put it on our Facebook accounts, yeah? Uh, our Facebook and Instagram. No, don't put it on our Instagram, please. Don't put it on Instagram, please. WhatsApp. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here. He can get on the WhatsApp. Yeah, he will send it. Yeah? Caleb is on. Okay, I will send it via WhatsApp. All righty, thank you very much. Sorry, I don't normally. I don't, I don't, I don't. I have been doing this for over one year. I do not, I do not want this. And I keep getting my friends telling me. But anyway, thank you, Alaba. I'll do it this time. I'll do it this time. Bye -bye you. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. We have had I, I hope that you will share. I'm um, hoping that Caleb in the next one week will be able to put this video onto our um, switch off your volume. I hope that um, you're going to be able to watch it on our YouTube channel and I think it's on Facebook Live so it will be there for people that want to watch. You can direct people to the post to go and watch it and share it with others. The fundamental reason for sharing it is for us to be able to create an awareness and let people know that even if they need help, we're here, we'll try. I'm not saying we can do everything because we can't, but we're in organizations in Nigeria that help. I do know we have helped quite a lot of people with um, getting the right people to talk to for diagnosis. Depending on where you are, we can always find people. Next month, we will be talking about liver cancer and Hold on, no. Liver and kidney, no. Postrate. What? Postrate. No, no, no. We have done prostate. Caleb, what's the second person? What's the second one we're doing? Liver and... It's why lungs. Huh? Liver and lungs. We're doing liver and lungs in lungs, yeah. August 2021. And we have Dr. Um, B. I call him Dr. B because it's a double barrel surname. He will be speaking and he's based in University of Port Harcourt. He's an oncologist. Um, so anybody that has people that have friends and family who want to hear about lung cancer or liver cancer, which is also a high killer in Nigeria, he will be talking about it and directing people onto where to get help. Uh, I want to thank you all very, very much for joining us today. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for listening and I want to 
thank God for your own lives. No matter what your journey is, please remember together we fight, together we win. Just always seek the right advice. Nobody's stopping you from believing God, but don't let that distract you. God is still the center of it all. Thank you very much for joining us. It was nice seeing you. You can follow us on our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our WhatsApp, um, our YouTube channel. And I think um, our website has information for you as well. Have a fantastic weekend while I go and get ready to graduate. I've been holding it back for two, almost one year. I graduated last year and I thought I would be able to go live. But the point is it didn't happen. And so I'm going to just wear my gown today. So those of you that see me. Congratulations. With the doctor hat. That's that horrible looking hat today. I will wear it. I will wear them. I know that you're not shaking. And I'm telling you people, all of you that are looking at me. In this house, cancer, I've had two grandchildren. No. Fight! <laughs> Fight! Fight, please. Fight, please. Fight, please. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. I will see you soon. Congratulations. Congratulations. Glamour. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your graduation. Congratulations, Denise. Thank you. Mama. Aisha, I'm going to call you later. Yeah, sure. Congratulations, Dr. Denise. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Thank Suleiman, you so for being on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Dennis, coincidentally, Suleiman and I Thank grew up guys. together. He's my brother. Are you serious? Dennis, yes, he's my he's my younger brother, and we worked together. In and you didn't tell system. him, and he's the one helping us. So, uh, in fact, I told him. Oh, he knows. Oh, he knows. I told uh, him. No, no, no. You don't collect zero. <laughs> you don't collect zero. Thank you, Mr. Suleiman, for everything. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Edina. Bye. 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 Yeah. Yes, congratulations. Thank enjoy you. your graduation. I go enjoy them. You go and enjoy wedding. Yes, Senior sir, Aisha yes, Diko. <laughs> Where is she? She has gone. Ow. I like that blue hat though. I, I, yeah, I, I was just going to. No, is that a hat? It's not. That's a, a gas gele now. Yeah, that, it's a gele. It's not hat too. Oh, it. it looks like they're outside. No, it look at Rosemary Zone as well. Rosemary right? Terriba. Yeah, that is beautiful. Wow. Yes, we attended the same function. It's, oh, a, it's yeah. not a hat, though. It's yeah, a it looks like a hat, does it? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. Rosemary is right. actually right. Thank you very much. I said has been carrying my bag and doing everything. Oh, She's oh, 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 thank you. Ready. Well done. Thank you. Thank you should you. tie your gilly as well. Yeah. Somebody tie that gilly. <laughs> I, I need that gilly, that rosemary one. That is that <laughs> material. Okay, no problem. Okay. We'll look into it. Consider it done. All right. Take care of yourselves. Have a lovely, Bye. Have a lovely Enjoy your day. I will. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia.